On today's episode, China has a new plan for Mars, NASA gets a new boss, and he arrives just in time to see the Artemis program fall even deeper into shambles. China has released new details about their upcoming Mars sample return mission, Tianwen-3, scheduled to launch in 2028 and return the first Mars rock by 2031. The primary goal here is to identify signs of ancient life and reveal the true past of the Red Planet. The Tianwen-3 mission is a key part of China's growing space exploration program, following on the success of Tianwen-1, which landed a rover on Mars in 2021 and then spent a little over one year studying the Martian surface. In order to support the complexity of a sample return operation, Tianwen-3 will require multiple launch vehicles. Two Long March 5 rockets are set to lift off in 2028. One will carry an orbiter and return vehicle, while the other will send a lander and ascent vehicle. The mission team recently shared their approach in a scientific article, including details about where and how the samples will be collected and studied. They have identified 86 potential landing sites, focusing on areas like Chris Planitia and Utopia Planitia. These regions are home to features such as ancient lake beds, deltas, and coastlines, places where water likely existed billions of years ago. These environments are considered ideal for preserving traces of past life, known as biosignatures. China won't have the luxury of collecting a high quantity of samples over a large area, such as what NASA is doing right now with the Perseverance rover. So the Chinese want to ensure that they land in the most strategic area that has the best chance at delivering what they are looking for. In order to prepare themselves, the Chinese have been studying areas of the Earth similar to Mars, like hyper-arid deserts. They're trying to get an idea of where those signs of life are most likely to be hiding. China is also creating some simulated Mars environments in laboratories to practice sample collection and analysis. To gather a wide variety of samples, the mission will use a combination of surface tools and drilling equipment. This will allow scientists to gather materials from different depths and geological layers, offering a more complete picture of Mars history. Special instruments are being developed to search for potential biosignatures in the collected materials. The samples will be analyzed for evidence of organic molecules, hydrated minerals, and other signs that Mars once supported life. China has also hinted that they will be developing a helicopter drone to assist with sample gathering on Mars, something very similar to what NASA has done with the Ingenuity Copter. Tianwen-3 will also involve international cooperation, with scientific instruments designed through partnerships with researchers around the world. Once the samples are returned to Earth, scientists from different countries will work together to study the data and share the findings. This collaborative approach highlights the global importance of understanding Mars and its potential to host life. Of course, there is another international effort running at the same time to return samples from Mars. That's a partnership between the Americans and Europeans. Ever since its exploration began nearly four years ago, NASA's Perseverance rover has been collecting samples of Martian soil and then leaving them behind in sealed containers like a trail of breadcrumbs. The original plan had been to send a fetch rover and an ascent vehicle at some point in this decade to retrieve the samples and return them to Earth. Then earlier this year, we found out that there just isn't enough money or resources at NASA or ESA to actually make this plan happen. So we're currently in the process of collecting proposals from private space companies that might be able to provide the necessary infrastructure. And we can't talk about Mars without Elon Musk. He is adamant right now that SpaceX will send human beings to the Red Planet as early as 2028, and if not, then definitely by 2030. So Elon could still manage to beat both NASA and China to returning the first samples from Mars, if Starship proves to be successful. Either way, between the three of them, the 2030s should be a decade where we learn a lot more about the true nature of Mars and our early solar system. Although it already appears like NASA is about to enter a period of incredible change. And based on this new development, I would say that all bets are off. 
US President-elect Donald Trump has nominated billionaire businessman and private astronaut Jared Isaacman to assume the lead as the next administrator of NASA. Isaacman has had an incredible journey in his life so far, going from piloting fighter jets to commanding SpaceX missions. Isaacman isn't your typical executive. At 41 years old, he's the CEO of Shift4, a payment processing company that Isaacman founded in 1999. This is where he made his fortune, but Isaacman's involvement with the aerospace industry really began in 2012, when he co-founded an operation called Draken International. This is a Florida-based company that trains American military pilots for combat missions. Draken has their own fleet of around 150 tactical fighter aircraft that would operate as training resources. It's the largest fleet of privately owned fighter jets in the world, and in a way it makes Draken a kind of private air force. Jared sold his stake in that company back in 2020. Now we enter the era where we all know Jared Isaacman as the founder of the SpaceX Polaris program. Polaris is a series of private crewed space missions designed to push the boundaries of human spaceflight, advance research on space health, showcase new technologies, and support charitable causes. Isaacman has already made history twice in space. Back in 2021, he led Inspiration4, the world's first all-private orbital mission a groundbreaking step for commercial spaceflight. More recently, during the Polaris Dawn mission, he ventured farther from the Earth than anyone had in over 50 years, even stepping outside the spacecraft for a commercial spacewalk. His hands-on experience as an astronaut makes him a very unique pick to lead NASA. Trump announced the nomination on social media, calling Isaacman an ideal choice to quote, drive NASA's mission of discovery and inspiration. Former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein, who served during Trump's first term, also backed Isaacman, saying his vision and experience in the private sector make him the right person for the job. Even Lori Garver, who was NASA's Deputy Administrator under President Obama, said Isaacman's nomination is, quote, terrific news. It's not often you see that kind of agreement in Washington, so something's going on here. If confirmed, Isaacman will oversee NASA's $25 billion annual budget. That includes funding for the Artemis program, which aims to send astronauts back to the moon and eventually beyond. But Artemis hasn't been smooth sailing. There are delays, budget concerns, and growing competition from China, which is planning its own moon landing by 2030. With Isaacman in charge, some big decisions about NASA's future will be on the table. Isaacman has been vocal about what he thinks needs to change. He's questioned the agency's reliance on the Space Launch System, a rocket that costs upwards of $4 billion per launch and is not reusable. He's pointed out that while NASA spends billions on redundant lunar landers, it has no backup for SLS, calling this a risky move. Isaacman's commercial approach to space travel could lead to shifts in how NASA handles its programs, possibly favoring reusable spacecraft like the SpaceX Starship over traditional government-built systems. But Isaacman isn't just about cutting costs and streamlining operations. He's passionate about space exploration and believes it can inspire the next generation to dream big. Having seen Earth from space, he's committed to making humanity a true spacefaring species. Whether it's walking on the moon, reaching Mars, or even going further, he sees NASA as a driving force in making those dreams a reality. Isaacman has said that under his leadership, NASA will ensure America never loses its place as a leader in space exploration, saying, quote, We will inspire children to look up and dream of what's possible. Of course, NASA's current board of decision makers couldn't step aside before making one last disappointing announcement. The Artemis II mission has been delayed yet again. Not exactly shocking, but still sad. Artemis II has been shifted from September 2025 to sometime in the spring 2026. This is a mission that was designed to send a crew of four people on a trip to lunar orbit and then back again. 
very similar in scope to Artemis 1, just with people on board this time. And Artemis 1 appeared to have been very successful, so it was expected that progress to a crewed flight would happen pretty fast. But that's not been the case. We know of two issues that developed with the mission's Orion capsule following the first test in 2021. The biggest is with the capsule's heat shield. We know that there was excessive erosion when Artemis 1 returned through Earth's atmosphere. It's normal for heat shields to lose some material as they re-enter, but Orion came back missing big chunks of material. That's bad. And we've found the reason behind this now, and it's a weird one. NASA says that the low heat portion of the entry actually did the most damage to the heat shield tiles. The material that they're using still performs as expected in the high heat segments, but at lower temperatures it falls apart for some reason. This has to do with the skip re-entry method that NASA was using for Artemis 1, like skipping a stone. On the first approach, the capsule hits the atmosphere lightly and then bounces off. This kills a little bit of velocity and then sets them up for the real entry on the second hit. So that first skip is what messed up the heat shield, and NASA's new plan to prevent that from happening again is to just skip the skip and go straight for a direct entry which is going to have astronauts coming down at a much higher velocity and will create a lot more total heat, but should actually be safer overall, or so we're told. But I imagine we're going to be hearing some very different ideas coming out of NASA in about a month's time from now, so let's stay tuned.